the Joe Rogan experience. It's the pattern. Let me pause here because this is this is one of the primary misconceptions that people have about consuming meat. When they hear studies that say that meat is associated with mortality or high cholesterol or heart disease or all these different factors. We are talking about these kinds of studies where people fill out a form, tell us what you eat. Yeah. Do you, how many days a week do you eat meat? How many days a week do you eat this? What they don't take into account is whether or not these people are going to Wendy's and whether or not they're eating a grass-fed totally. steak and, 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 you know, and broccoli something healthy there's a giant difference between those two things but they're lumped in together because this is meat consumption yeah there's the, the studies aren't perfect for sure um but you were saying that basically you're looking saying we should look at outcomes and not just look at individual markers right is that basically no i'm saying we should look at the diet quality the overall diet pattern so right. for example christopher gardner did a study at stanford a, a, a couple of years ago and he Took to, instead of saying, you know, low fat, low carb, he took two groups and he advised them all to basically eat a healthy diet. And then one group ate a low fat, healthy diet and the other group ate a low carb, healthy diet. They all lost weight. Agreed. But there wasn't that big of a difference I, between the two. I agree. So, I agree. So first of all, in terms of health, I, I would be pretty, my, my opinion would be I'm pretty much um, macronutrient agnostic. So I wouldn't like... I'm not advocating high carb or low carb. I think that people can do healthy and well. I think for athletes, they need a lot more carbs, which yes. is, of course, getting those from plants. I think there's certain athletes that can, uh, if, if it's slow and steady state where you're you know, getting more fat oxidation, um, I think that, you know, slow and steady state athletes can do. But like an MMA fighter, a soccer player, yes. a basketball player. Agreed. We more all carbs. agree on that. Yeah, okay. we all agree but on but that. you just said that you were, you were not low carb, right? You said you're not low carb. I'm not. I'm not a low carb advocate. I've written articles called Seven Things Seven Reasons You Should Be Cautious. I'm not saying I'm not low a low carb advocate. I I don't believe everyone should be on a low carb diet. Right. I've never, I've been, never believed believe that. Some but the thing is Chris has his own he doesn't have the consensus um, definitions of carbohydrate levels. You've made up your own definitions, right? When did I make up my own well, definitions? Okay, so slide uh, eighty, Jamie, if if you could do that, please. I just point out that Zach Bitter, the man who I had on the podcast yesterday, who holds the world record yep. in running 100 miles in 11 hours and I think it's 18 minutes, uh, he's on a low carbohydrate diet. Yeah, and you, and again, you can, yeah. those slow and steady state, you can certainly yeah. do well. Um, so, so Chris, your recommendation, your your definition of low carb is 10 to 15 percent. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, Jamie, 81. So if you look at the peer-reviewed literature, it's either less than 30% or, the next slide, Jamie, less than 40%. Like if you look across all the literature, it's less than 30 or 40. Moderate carb, according to Chris, uh, next slide, Jamie, would be 15 to 30. Uh, peer-reviewed literature, next car, next slide, 40 to 65. And then high carb, Chris calls more than 30%. And the peer-reviewed literature, high carb, more than 65. Uh, and the next slide, more than 70, depending on the peer-reviewed literature. So... You've come up with your own definitions of what is low, moderate, and high carb. Yeah, just for the purpose of you just my said work. No, it's for the purpose joke. of my work with people, that that's not related. I wasn't trying to represent research there. That's right, just, jo Joe. <laughs> that's what I consider to be low carb, moderate carb, and high carb in my work with patients okay, and Joe, in my did recommendations. You, Joe, did you not right, just hear him say he did? I mean, th that is what you said. I mean, you when you wrote this out. You did have a different definition than the peer reviewed so literature. Slide, slide 88. So you, you do, slide 88. by his definition, have your own idea. And he of said what no. High carb you heard him carbs. say that. You heard him say no. Yes. Yeah. And so slide I, uh, slide 88, please, Jamie. So I just want to sum this up. Um, but what's the point here? Because the I, point I, is, the I've, point I've I never said, said that everyone should be on a low carb diet. No, I agree. And but, I, I've but, always argued that it depends on everything from your genes to your exercise pattern. Where, but activity. Chris, where are you getting your numbers from? Like when you write low carb, moderate carb, and high carb, he made them up. This is just a rec this this is a clinical recommendation from my experience working with patients. I'm not representing the scientific literature here. I'm not trying to make arguments about but we're talking what's about nutrition. Or, that's or that, not that's safe. madness. That that's absolute madness to come up with your own definitions. And this is why I feel that Chris does. Okay? And when you have people like Chris on multiple times, it throws people's perception off as what is a healthy diet because Chris misrepresents the data. He comes up with his own definitions of things. He misrepresents things that we said in the film. 
Okay. What did what, I misrepresent in the film? But, but hold on. Let's, well, we're going to get, we're gonna get into the woods. We're going to get into the woods here. Let's just talk about this real quick. What, so when we're talking about low carb, moderate carb, or high carb, when you're recommending to your patients low mm. carb, moderate carb, or high carb, these definitions, how are you coming to these conclusions? Just made them up. No, based on – so there are a lot of people, James, that, that disagree with the – the car, the ranges, the scientific in consensus, the, in, in, yeah. The, but there when you are. say scientific <clears throat> consensus, how many different scientists were were polled on this? How many different studies were shown? Well, I, I don't well, know. What is the scientific? But is this something like, that? But hold on a second. Is this something that you just found that? disputes his position or no, 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 is this, this is, like a large the, group of people no this is okay so slide 89 well so, consider so, verta health who uses you know Ver, the folks at verta who are mm -hmm. all scientists mds yes. they use a ketogenic very low carb diet to no they, treat, they choose to, markers, address actually, diabetes no they actually but, don't. hold on let, okay sure, you, sure. you will not be in ketosis at 30 percent carbohydrate right. or 25 percent or 20 percent or, right. or even 15%. Right. You, for for it's ketosis, be 7 you need low carb. You know, set, yes. Probably totally less agree. than 10%. Agree. Okay. So, okay. I agree. I don't think there's anything. So, uh, yeah. you know, that and, – and then, you know, 40 to 65% <clears> – <throat> you're not you're no you're not even in the ballpark you know so if, if you're thinking carb, about right? using cl low carbohydrate diets for example for weight loss or for diabetes or you know metabolic issues like verta health is doing then you low carb is not going to be 30 to 40 percent okay like that's that not going to work so, so that's where I, my recommendation, recommendation is coming is from is based, is based on ketosis on, <laughs> based on <laughs> no based on the optimal range if you have if you look at the rest of the article, it's going to be like, if you've got diabetes, you've got, you're overweight, you're obese, you're trying to lose weight. This is the range that I've found and other experts like the people at Verta Health have found will be most effective. And these are it's the not, ranges. It's not, I, there's no representation that this is the range that is defined as low carb in the scientific literature. So you're, do you're, talking, you're calling it low carb because if someone's on a ketogenic low carb diet, in order to get into ketosis, you have to have a low number of carbohydrates. It's actually probably even below 10%. And not, right? even, not, so not even just to be in ketosis, like just to get the, the maximal weight loss. You know, someone could be at 15% and still get Sorry, great weight I, loss without being in ketosis. Sure, I've I got to interrupt because just like in the last five minutes, you showed a study from trying to prove your own point that low carb and low fat people had equiv uh, equivalent uh, fat loss. You just said that. So why are you now all of a sudden advocating only low carb diets for uh, I'm not losing advocating body advocating only low carb diets. Okay, so then you, I, but I anyway. said that, that they can both work for well, different but, people in different situations. I agree. But, but James, you're misrepresenting what he was saying. What he was saying is getting people to go on a healthy diet versus mm -hmm. the standard American diet. Yep. So he's not <clears throat> just talking about low carb versus high carb. What he's talking about is getting off bullshit like processed foods and sugar and eating I healthy. I totally agree with that. And when you do that, people, no matter what, low carb or high carb, lose weight. But I think you will agree, yep. as well as almost anybody would, that getting on a low carbohydrate diet and forcing your body into ketosis makes your body burn fat. That's it's one way, yeah, it's, sure. But it's it's proven, right? No, it's, it, uh, the, yeah, other, the other piece of this is most of the studies aren't comparing... A healthy omnivorous diet with a pl you know plant-based vegan diet. They're comparing a vegan diet with a standard American diet that contains animal products. Right. Well, same, what we're same, talking same, about. Same, not same, a same fair with the paleo comparison. diet, so or his Nutrivore diet. Yes. Which, by the way, yes. has any of your work or your ideas been published in the scientific literature? No, I've never claimed that, that right. it has. I just, I just wondered. So you didn't wonder. No, I did wonder. No, I, he, I couldn't find anything. But that's no, no, not what you were saying that. You were no. saying that to try to make it seem that he's less of an expert. Well, he is. I'm not an expert either. So but, what, what's the point? Why are so you I, here? <clears throat> why am I here? Well, I, actually, I did ask if I could bring my chief science advisor who has a double master's degree in exercise physiology and nutrition. He's a registered yeah. dietitian. He built I've one of his. I've read all of his papers and we can talk about them. <clears throat> yeah, totally. <laughs>